Sagalp and Agarbha Pranayam While discussing the evolution of the concept of pranayam, we have already seen that at the time of Patanjali there had been two approaches to pranayam, one connecting it with some religious rituals while the other one emphasizing mainly its psychophysiological aspect. One of the ancient scripture known as Hastagiri Mahatmya says that pranayam is said to be sagarb ai with inner content when it is accompanied by concentration on some deity or recitation of some mantra while the simple holding of breath is called agarbha ai without any inner content in another scripture known as brihadyogi janvalkya smriti it is suggested that while inhaling the breath meditate upon vishnu at the navel region while retaining the breath meditate upon brahma in the heart region and while exhaling the breath meditate upon mahesh in the forehead region later on as in shat chakra nirupna we find the insistence upon meditation on the image of any particular deity or the recitation of some specific mantra has been dropped and this religious aspect has been left to a belief choice and personal inclination of an individual thus in a nutshell The emphasis in sagarb pranayam is less on the technical aspect of pranayam and its psychophysiological effects and more on the process of concentration of the mind on some thought process or a symbolic representation of a deity or on a mental verbalization of some mantra. Nonetheless this practice is still expected to have some discernible effect on the body and the mind. In agarbha pranayam on the other hand There is a more emphasis on the technical aspect with a great importance being given to the specific way of carrying out the inhalation exhalation and in or outer retention of breath their time duration sankhya the concentration on various sensations arising at different locations desha the total duration of the practice kala etc Along with the emphasis on these technical details there is also an insistence upon doing each maneuver with full mental attention the alert and discriminative mind with total awareness of what is happening inside during each phase becomes an integral part of this type of pranayam the realization that the activity of the breath and the activity of the mind are linked with each other in an integral way was very much instrumental for the growth of varieties of techniques of agarbha pranayam in hath pradipika it has been stated that the one who controls the breath can control the mind and one who controls the mind alone can control the breath therefore it specifically suggests that all practices involving breath should be done with full mental awareness and while practicing pranayam the yogi should be alert to see that his mind does not wander away from whatever he is doing from the above description it becomes quite clear that in both the sagarb and the agarbha pranayam The involvement of the mental attention has been incorporated very firmly in their technique. The only difference is of details of where the mind is made to focus its activity whether on some religious object or on the sensations arising out of the inner pranic flow. The aim for both these types of pranayam is also more or less the same that is to lead the student on the spiritual path.